In this video we're looking at Hawarthia attenuata, commonly called the zebra plant. But there's more to this plant than meets the eye. Firstly, there are a number of varieties. Secondly, when the plant's stressed, instead of being green and white, you get great shades of red. So over to James Lucas from Succulents Australia, who is going to tell us all about repotting these wonderful plants, how to divide them or remove the pups, He'll talk about fertiliser, he'll talk about potting mix, and then he'll show us some of the wonderful plants in his own collection. Here we have Hawarthia attenuata. It's one of the more common of the Hawarthias and one of the most popular actually, uh, commonly called a zebra plant. Today we're going to show you how to divide and pot this really nice plant. And you can see really clearly it is really due for a repot. It really needs a new one. This will break up into about seven or eight plants, I think. In nature, these are a clump forming plant and they actually form generally a major head with many, many pups around them. So in time, as most people do like to grow them as a single item or individual plant, you will have to repot them or pull them apart and divide them. And then you're gonna have some young ones to give your mates. The first indication that a pot really needs, or a plant needs potting up, it's really tight in here and they're, they're bursting out and they want to go. So you give the pot a bit of a squeeze and the plant will slide out really easily. And what you'll notice is these are really fibrously rooted plants. Now a lot of Hawarthias vary. Some of them have really big heavy roots and we might show you that later. I actually like to knock it out and you'll see that all the roots are actually going around the outer edge. So you sort of hollow it out a little bit, and it is better to thin the roots a little bit. They're quite easy to break off like this, or you can use secateurs to trim them. Now, about here, you will just rock it a little bit, and it will all start to come apart quite easily. The roots are really well knotted. It really is due for a good pot. Now, first one, second, third, and you'll notice these are actually their own individual plant now with roots. Just give them a little bit of a wriggle. It takes a little bit of pressure. Take off the old dead leaves because they've had no chance to get away being so compact. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I miscounted. I thought it was eight. When you're potting these, you can use several choices of pot. We're a nursery, so really we use these to resell. But you home gardeners could easily use one of these pots here. Now, they all have a nice big hole in them and they have large holes. And we have little pieces of netting on these so that you put over the hole and the soil doesn't fall through them. We're going to pot this little baby now, but what I'll do, I'll do this a bit decoratively so it's a little bit different. So we have our prepared soil mix here. This is my special blend of Hawarthia mix, and I'll explain a little bit of that later. We half fill that. A little bit of food. Not too much, just a little bit. We'll put this at one end. And I reckon we'll do a little pear in here, one a bit smaller, and I reckon that'll look very nice. Ideally, threes are good, but I think two together like this would be excellent. Tuck it in firmly down there. Reach under the bench. I think we'll go for a bit of slightly pink gravel. Now, with Hawarthia, in about a week's time, I'd give that a water. Leave it for the time being. We've just opened up a lot of root wounds here, chopped roots, all the rest of it. So the thing is, is let them rest for a while in the dry soil and then give them a water in about a week. Okay, now we're going to pot into nursery pots. 
First off, pots are 30% filled. A little bit of food, not much, just a pinch, like a quarter of a teaspoon is all you need. <clears throat> I'll show you now what our fertilizer is. It's, it's basically two thirds, three quarters dolomite lime. It, that sweetens the soil. And in there is a little bit of osmocote and a bit of the white pellets are soft nitrogen fertilizer. Just like slow release, but like, and there's enough food in there to last these plants eight or nine months for another repot. Okay, this is the blend that I use for Hawarthia. It's a bit different to general succulent mix. This is my general succulent mix, which is basically pine bark and two types of sand mixed together. Hawthia, to grow really well, needs more open, more porosity, so it actually holds air. And that its healthy roots are what's really needed for Hawthias. So here we have koi, which is ground up coconuts. You can see this really quite uh, coarse, lumpy, and it's full of air. We have perlite. This is reasonably large pieces, not fine. You don't want it fine, you want it air again. So, and you see, very light, holds water, but also a lot of air. So this ratio is six potty mix, two koi, and we have here two types of sand. We have washed river sand, which also has fine sand, no clay plus up to three mil. And this one is almost pure three mil washed gravel. There's no fine stuff in it at all. It's just three mil stones. And again, that's really open and loose. Now, the other component in this is we need a ratio of one bucket of either pumice, which is, this is imported from New Zealand and it's pretty hard to get. We've got it here, but it's a really lovely light rock. A lot of air again and roots really like it because it holds air and air helps roots get more fine roots, breathe, everything like that. Now, if you can't get pumice, we use scoria. And again, this is up to seven mil rocks, but also fines in there as well. This does almost the same job as pumice, probably a little heavier. And that's really about it. Now, here we have some of the other attenuatus that we promised that we'd show you at the end of this video. This is attenuata wide stripes. This is one of the more desirable ones because of the really dramatic wide stripes. They're really, and it's called wide band. So it is a beautiful plant and you can see it's just beginning to flower here. Now this is really rare, this one. This is the white variegation. Now it's not hugely variegate, but you can see it here. And that is very unusual because the majority of the attenuatas are gold variegations. And this is gold variegation. Very easy to see gold, quite different to the white. And you can also see this one's really ready for a repot. And also that's quite a valuable plant. So it should be repotted and moved on. And this one's an albino form. It's just sort of pale golden color. Now I actually don't know the name of this one, but it is a form of variegate and it's inclined to go golden in the center and dark green on the outside edges. Again, a really desirable plant. And here we have extra wide bands. Now this has a bit more spacing between the bands, but the band is really strong. And you see it's a little bit wavy, but extra, extra white. This again is a real beauty. Look how white that is. Now this is a real beauty. This is a recent import from Japan. And you can see, it sort of has white stripy variegation, but still green. Now, really, we call this silk variegation because it's actually made up of many, many really, really fine lines with green in there. Now, this is a real beauty. When we stress this plant, and you can see it if you go carefully here, those leaves actually get red stripes in them. Can you see that red stripe there? Later in the year, when it gets colder and the stress shows on these. It's spring now, so they're not that stressed. These red stripes are all over these leaves. So it's sort of green, white with red. 
and it's a really dramatic plant. It's absolutely fabulous. I've never seen a variegate like it in my life. And you can also see here that these plants actually do revert back to their natural. So here we have, it's got some young pups, and this is the first of them, but two happen to be green, which are useless, and two happen to be variegate. So in three years, we've only have two babies off this very valuable rare plant. Now, there is a thing about quality variegations. Some of them turn out too yellow and actually they have no green. So in a way, it makes them an extremely weak plant. But these two here are extremely good quality variegations. They will throw good variegated pups and also be very good themselves and be strong growers because they have enough green in them to have enough chloroplasts to make the sugars to make it grow. The plants that are too yellow, this is actually a little bit too yellow. Half of it is good, but it produces almost no food. So therefore, it really struggles to grow. You need the mix of green and yellow. And also another thing with variegated plants is, these plants that are variegated, because they have so much gold in them, they have a fraction of the chloroplasts that a plain green plant will have, like this one here, and therefore they grow half the speed. They also reproduce at half the rate. So this is one of the reasons why variegated plants are much more unusual, harder to get, and more expensive. We've had a talk about Hawthia attenuata, but I thought I'd show you some of these, and we'll have a talk about some of these in the next video that we do. That's it for Hawthia attenuata. But we've got separate videos on other Hawthia varieties. You might be interested in Hawthia cooperi. That's a wonderful plant, sometimes called the crystal plant or the window plant. Or you might be interested in having a general look at other Hawthia varieties. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on a whole range of succulents and other garden plants. And as always, good luck with your gardening.